Here is your latest African news. Africa wide, African oil producers gather for the Angola Congress. The African Petroleum Producers Organization, APPO, will hold the 8th edition of the African Petroleum Congress and Exhibition, Cape 8, from 16th to 19th May in Luanda, Angola. The Congress is organized by APPO, the Government of the Republic of Angola, and AME Trade. It is a gathering of national, regional, and international energy, oil, and gas industry experts, deliberating on the challenges and opportunities of the energy transition and the future of the oil and gas industry in Africa. The meeting is designed primarily to promote and support investment in the oil and gas sector in Africa, as well as reflect on the orientations given by senior political leaders in charge of this sector. CAPE is reputed as the largest and most influential oil and gas event in Africa and seeks to provide investors the opportunity to have deeper information and knowledge of the strategic direction of the oil and gas industry in Africa. Nigeria Nigerian airline operators call off planned suspension of flights. Nigerian airline operators under the AGs of Airline Operators of Nigeria AON, have called off their planned suspension of flights due to a rise in jet fuel prices brought about by the Russian-Ukraine conflict, which was billed to commence on Monday 9th May. Only a day before the suspension of flights was scheduled to begin, the association announced that it was postponing the decision due to national economic and security concerns. Abdul Munaf Sarina, the president of the AON, announced the suspension on Sunday in a statement signed by six members of the organization. The Ministry of Aviation had previously told Nigerians that AON members were evaluating their decision to stop flying on Monday, May 9th. Kenya Refugees in Kenya gain employment rights. Kenya has been held for passing a law giving hundreds of thousands of refugees living in the country better access to education and employment. While some refugees in Kenya are reaping the benefits of the 2021 legislation, many face challenges that include the government's plan to shut down refugee camps by the end of June. The Refugee Act that was signed into law last year went to effect in February. Some 500,000 refugees who live in Kenya stand to benefit from the measure. Jamin Kuswania, project manager at the International Rescue Committee in in Nairobi in a statement said the old policy restricted refugees' movements. The new law is part of the Kenyan government's refugee integration as refugee camps currently house more than 400,000 people, mostly from South Sudan and Somalia. The country has one of Africa's largest refugee populations. Algeria and Cameroon FIFA rejects Algeria's appeal against Cameroon the world football body FIFA has rejected Algeria's appeal against the World Cup qualifying playoff against Cameroon. The announcement was made on 7th May by the Algerian Federation after winning the first leg 1-0 in Cameroon. The Fenex were eliminated 2-1 on March 29th in the return leg at home by a last-second extra-time goal from Karl Toko Ekambi. On March 31st, the Algerian Federation announced an appeal with FIFA asking for the match to be replayed because of what they described as disgraceful refereeing of Gambian Bakari Gassama. According to the letter, FIFA's Referees Committee refused to accept the request. The elimination of the Algerian side for next was seen as a national tragedy. Supporters demonstrated several times in front of the FIFA headquarters in Zurich, Switzerland. South Africa South Africa launches world's biggest hydrogen fuel truck. Mining giant Anglo-American has unveiled the world's largest hydrogen-powered truck, a monster weighing 220 tons, at a platinum mine in northern South Africa. Built as the first of a fleet that would replace the firm's diesel-powered trucks, the vehicle uses 2 megawatts hydrogen fuel cells to haul up to 290 tons of ore. Comparable in size to a small house, the behemoth was shown off at Mogalakwena Mine, about 250 kilometers or 150 miles from Johannesburg. Anglo-American said it aims to be car carbon neutral by 2040. It will use solar power to provide the fuel, using the energy to split water into its component atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. Burning hydrogen releases only water vapor, not heat trapping carbon dioxide as in the case of fossil fuels. Zimbabwe Country suspends bank lending 
Authorities in Zimbabwe have ordered banks to stop lending with immediate effect. According to the government, the decision was taken to stop speculation against the Zimbabwean dollar and was part of a raft of measures to stop its rapid devaluation on the black market. Zimbabwe reintroduced a local currency in 2019 after abandoning it in 2009 when it was hit by hyperinflation. President Emerson Munangawa accused unnamed speculators of borrowing Zimbabwe dollars at below inflation interest rates and using the money to trade in foreign exchange. The devaluation of the Zimbabwe dollar's black market exchange rate has been driving up inflation. Year-on-year -year inflation reached 96.4% in April from 60.6% in January. Nigeria Nigeria accused of injustice over hashtag and SARS deaths. Nigerian authorities have been accused of failing to ensure justice for the killing of hashtag and SARS protesters in 2020, six months after judicial panel implicated security forces. Human Rights Watch has tasked the government to act on the panel's recommendations and hold those responsible to account. In a statement, it said failure to act on the panel's recommendations will send a painful message to the victims and risk encouraging more violence by security officers. Hundreds of young people took to the streets of major cities in Nigeria in October 2020 to call for the disbandment of a police unit known as the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, in a movement dubbed Hashtag End SARS. Security forces were accused of responding with excessive force, including gunfire. One of the worst crackdowns was at the Lekki toll gate in Lagos when army and police officers reportedly opened fire deadly on a crowd of protesters. A panel set up by the Lagos state government in the wake of the protesters found in November last year that security forces shot, injured and killed unarmed protesters. It recommended disciplinary measures and prosecution of army and police officers implicated, as well as payment of compensation to victims. The report was disputed, but the Lagos state government said it fully or partially accepted all but one of the panel's recommendations, promising to act. Ghana 11 Ghanaians missing as Chinese fishing vessel sinks in Elimina. At least 11 people are missing after a trawler sank off the coast of Ghana, Ghanaian authorities have said. The MV Comforter 2, a Ghanaian vessel operated by a Chinese company, sank during a storm about 180 kilometers off Takoradi, southwest, Ghana's second largest port. According to Deputy Director of Fisheries, 26 crew members were on board when the incident occurred, with 15 rescued and 11 still missing. The official said some of the survivors who suffered minor injuries were traumatized. According to survivor accounts, the crew were fishing in a storm when the disaster occurred. In Ghana, foreign vessels must register under the local flag and access the country's waters with local licenses. A 2018 survey by the Environmental Justice Foundation, a report found that 90% of fishing vessels operating in Ghana are linked to Chinese companies. Uganda Push to downsize Uganda Parliament A plan to introduce a bill that seeks to downsize the Ugandan Parliament by almost half is causing a stir within the ruling party as several legislators say the proposed law should be discussed and supported to improve governance. Initially, the plan proposed to have each district represented by two people, a man and a woman, a move that would see the number of MPs fall from the current 556, who include ex-official members, to 292 MPs, representing 146 districts. Last month, the Constitutional Court ruled that the Electoral Commission violated the Constitution by creating new constituencies that do not meet the population quota based on data from the 2002 and 2014 census. The court observed that densely populated districts such as Kampala, Wakiso and Arua were underrepresented when compared to smaller districts that have several legislators. South Africa Flights cancelled as Johannesburg hit by fuel shortage. 
After 14 flight cancellations affecting over 3,000 passengers, the airport's company of South Africa says it is working to rectify the fuel shortage at the OR Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg. The Central Energy Fund says it will assist international airlines to refuel should their suppliers be unable to provide aviation fuel. A ship carrying 10 million litres of fuel is currently docked in Durban, but that consignment is only expected to reach Johannesburg via pipeline next week. OR Tambo Airport's main supply of fuel is via rail, but flood damage to the network in the KwaZulu-Natal region around Durban means it will not be partially reopened until June. The airport currently has just over three days of fuel left, but authorities are confident that measures put in place will prevent further cancellations. East Africa EAC adopts new tax rate to protect infant industries. Trade and finance ministers in the East African community, EAC, have adopted a 35% levy that seeks to protect infant industries within the region against unfair competition. The EAC Common External Tariff, which applies to imports that are similar to goods produced within the East African community, was reached by regional ministers of trade and finance during a retreat to review the Common External Tariff in Mombasa, Kenya last week. The meeting further directed EAC partner states to identify products which are affected by the current global trade disruptions for consideration during the pre-budget consultations meeting scheduled for May 9th to 13th, 2022. The tariff is reviewed every five years. The last review was done in 2016. South Africa 2022 Mining in Daba Summit kicks off in South Africa. The 2022 Mining in Daba Summit began on Monday in Cape Town, South Africa. The summit is scheduled to run until the end of the week and intends to highlight the issues surrounding mining in Africa. Speaking during the opening of the summit, the Zambian president called upon elected leaders in their respective countries to be responsible for their duties. Other leaders also called upon countries in Africa must share the benefits of their respective resources. This year's mining in Daba happens with a backdrop of high energy prices, which pose a significant inflationary risk to the poor and emerging markets. The mining industry on the continent has been impacted by other issues like insecurity, worker strikes and low global mineral prices. Burkina Faso Sankara assassination suspects ordered to pay 1.3 million US dollars in damages. The military court in Ugadugu has sentenced former Burkina Faso President Blaise Compare and nine other defendants to pay more than 1.3 million US dollars in damages to the beneficiaries of former head of state Thomas Sankara and his companions assassinated in 1987. The sum is ordered to be jointly paid by Blaise Compaore, the former commander of his guard Hyacinth Cafando, and the former head of the army in 1987, Gilbert Diandere, all sentenced to life imprisonment in early April for their involvement in the assassination, as well as seven other defendants sentenced to between 3 and 20 years in prison. According to the court decision, the Burkina Bay government will have to compensate the beneficiaries if the convicted persons are unable to pay their amounts. The military court, however, rejected a request for the return of Thomas Sankara's property to his family. Thomas Sankara, who came to power in a coup in 1983, was killed along with 12 of his companions by a commando during a meeting at the headquarters of the National Council of the Revolution, CNR, in Ugadugu. He was 37 years old. The death of Thomas Sankara, who wanted to decolonize mentalities, was a taboo subject during Mr. Kompara's 27 years in power. He was forced out by a popular uprising in 2014. He has since been living in exile in Côte d'Ivoire and has been sentenced in absentia, as has Hyacinth Cafando, who has been on the run since 2016. Malawi Malawi Parliament moves to abolish death penalty. 
Malawi's parliament has started public inquiries in the capital, Ilongwe, on a proposal to abolish the death penalty following last month's adoption of a report recommending the move. It comes after Parliament mandated its Legal Affairs Committee to solicit views from the general public on the subject before potentially changing any laws. Malawi court appealed to have abolished the death sentence in April last year after Supreme Court judge heard the petition of a convicted murderer and ruled that the death penalty negates the right to life, which is otherwise provided for under the Malawi's constitution. The judge then ordered the resentencing of all cases where the death penalty was handed down. However, four months later, the Supreme Court issued a statement saying the judge had expressed his personal opinion and the death penalty remained applicable. There have been growing calls for Malawi to abolish the death penalty, especially because the country is a signatory to the Declaration of Universal Human Rights in which the punishment is not allowed. Kenya Kenya finds colonial-era bomb used to colonize them in farm. A colonial-era unexploded mortar bomb has been discovered in a farm at a village in central Kenya. Kenyan police said concerned villagers miled around the object, some arguing that it was a missile while others claimed that it was part of the harvest. Officers from the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, DCI, who responded immediately after being informed identified the object as a mortar bomb. The dangerous military ordinance was left behind by the British forces at the height of the Mau Mau uprising in 1953 when sections of Mount Kenya and Abadea Forest suffered aerial bombardment to flash out Mau Mau fighters. When British settlers began pouring into Kenya in 1902, they intended to set up an agricultural colony whose surplus could help pay the cost of other imperial projects in East Africa. To do this, the British needed land and labor, which led them into a series of policy decisions that culminated in a grotesque genocide that the history books have largely overlooked. Thousands of people were killed during the Mau Mau revolt against British rule in Kenya and was one of British Army's bloodiest post-war conflicts. The uprising was a great significant step towards the independence of their country. West Africa EU seeks cocoa pricing alliance with West African countries. European legislators, under the auspices of the Responsible Business Conduct Working Group of the European Parliament, have written to the European Commission to commence talks with Ivory Coast and Ghana to address pure cocoa pricing. Earlier in the year, Ghana and Ivory Coast, which accounts for two-thirds of the world's cocoa, called on the EU to join them in creating an economic pact to boost living wages for cocoa farmers. Low prices paid for cocoa are a main driver of deforestation and child labor in the sector. The deal would entail an agreement between all parties on what to do to resolve the low price of cocoa and manage cocoa supply to prevent market shocks, it said. The EU is a leading destination for Ivorian cocoa, accounting for about 67% of the country's exports. Both countries in 2019 imposed a living income premium on all cocoa purchases in order to raise farmers' wages. Kenya Content moderator in Kenya sues Meta over working conditions. A former moderator working for Facebook owner Meta Platforms Inc. has filed a lawsuit alleging that poor working conditions for contracted content moderators violate the Kenyan constitution. The petition, also filed against Meta's local outsourcing company Sama, alleges that workers moderating Facebook posts in Kenya have been subjected to unreasonable working conditions including irregular pay, inadequate mental health support, union busting, and violations of their privacy and dignity. The lawsuit filed by one person on behalf of a group seeks financial compensation, an order that outsource moderators have the same health care and pay scale as Meta employees, that unionization rights be protected, and an independent human rights audit of the office. The lawsuit's specific requests for action are more granular and wide-ranging than those sought in previous cases and could reverberate beyond Kenya. Globally, thousands of moderators review social media posts that could depict violence, nudity, racism or other offensive content. Many work for third-party contractors rather than tech companies. 
Meta has already faced scrutiny over content moderators' working conditions. Last year, a California judge approved an $85 million settlement between Facebook and more than 10,000 content moderators who had accused the company of failing to protect them from psychological injuries resulting from their exposure to graphic and violent imagery. Sierra Leone Sierra Leone launches bid for UN Security Council seat. Sierra Leone has launched a bid for a seat in the non-permanent category of the United Nations Security Council, UNSC. President Julius Madabio officially launched the campaign at a ceremony at State House. The Council is one of six organs of the UN and it has the primary responsibility of maintaining international peace and security. Sierra Leone served in the influential position once from 1970 to 1971 since it joined the UN in 1961. Sierra Leone's plan to bid for a seat on UNSC had been rumored for some time. Reports suggested that the government had been mobilizing support from friendly countries, particularly on the continent. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said Sierra Leone is the sole candidate for Africa and has been endorsed by the African Union and West African Bloc ECOWAS. The government said the bid isn't about Sierra Leone alone, noting that it's also part of a larger goal of attaining Africa's long-held desire for reforms in the UNSCR. Sierra Leone has been leading the Africa Union's Committee of 10, C10, to negotiate the continent's position on the reforms for about a decade. The other members are Kenya, Equatorial Guinea, the Republic of the Congo, Namibia, Zambia, Libya, Algeria, Senegal, and Uganda. Nigeria. Former Nigerian leader rejects presidential nomination. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has rejected a presidential nomination form bought for him by a group from northern Nigeria. Jonathan's media advisor, Ikechuku Eze, said in a statement that a group had bought the form and that the former president did not authorize the punches and considered the move by the group an insult. The form was for the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, that defeated Jonathan, who governed Nigeria on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, before losing his re-election bid to Muhammadu Buhari in 2015. Nigeria's main political parties are expected to hold their primaries later this month to meet the Electoral Commission's dateline of 3rd June for the submission of their candidates for the February 2023 election. Ethiopia. State telecom operator launches 5G in Ethiopian capital. Ethio Telecom, the state-owned telecom service provider in Ethiopia, has launched the 5G mobile phone service making Ethiopia among the leading few African countries, including Kenya and East Africa, to roll out the technology. According to Ethio Telecom, the network will be available in hotspot areas in the capital Addis Ababa, including in the area around Ethio Telecom's head office and at the premises of Bole International Airport before being expanded to cover other parts of the country. 5G commercial networks have been launched in key countries such as Botswana, South Africa, Seychelles, Mauritius, and Zimbabwe, but the technology remains largely underdeveloped in larger parts of Africa. Senegal. State distributes aid as global economic crisis hits. President Macky Sall has announced emergency cash transfers to more than half a million Senegalese households to help them cope with the effect of the current global economic crisis. Since the start of the Russian-Ukraine conflict at the end of February, oil prices have soared on world markets, driving a sharp rise in fuel and food prices in many countries, including Senegal. President Sall authorized handing out of 150 US dollars per household monthly in order to improve their level of consumption and education. The state will use mobile payment to transfer far funds to underprivileged households, the authorities said. Senegal's economy returned to its pre-COVID-19 growth trajectory last year, but the Russian-Ukraine conflict has clouded this outlook for the economy, according to the International Monetary Fund in a March statement. Kenya. Kenyans welcome the entry of electric buses in its capital. 
The first electric passenger buses in East Africa have become a top attraction in Nairobi, where they offer cleaner, more environmentally friendly and economical transportation means for commuters in Kenya's capital. The two buses running on routes around the city are part of a pilot program launched by local electric mobility startup Basigo in March. Samuel Kamunya, head of business development at Basigo, said Nairobi residents have welcomed the electric buses. Basigo hopes to expand the operation of electric buses and deliver thousands electric buses to Nairobi in the next five years. The buses have a capacity of 25 passengers and are 100% electric. Basigo operates a recharging depot and has trained technicians to provide service and maintenance for the buses. Southern Africa South Africa advocates boosting mining cooperation with Angola. South Africa's Minister for Mineral Resources and Energy, Guid Mantasha, has said that his country wants to boost cooperation with Angola in the geology and mining sector. Speaking on the Angolan press after holding a working meeting with his Angolan counterpart, Diamantino Azevedo, he said that it was necessary to increase trade in mineral productions between the two states. He noted that Angola has great potential and experience in the oil sector and South Africa in the mining sector. Based on the potential of each country, the South African minister noted that it was always an opportunity to talk about common aspects and exchange experiences in various areas. The Angolan Minister of Mineral Resources, Oil and Gas, Diamantino Azevedo, was representing the country at the International Conference on Mining in Africa, which is being held in Cape Town during the week with a delegation made up of nine companies from the diamond subsector. Zimbabwe Zimbabwe government under fire for suspending bank credits. The Zimbabwean government has come under fire for imposing a freeze on bank lending. Stakeholders in the business sector have warned that the move will encourage the development of a shadow banking system and jeopardize the country's economic recovery. President Emerson Mnangawa recently ordered banks to suspend their lending activities as part of a plan to revive a country overwhelmed by soaring inflation driven by the Russian-Ukraine conflict and soaring commodity prices. In early April, the Central Bank of Zimbabwe raised its main policy rates from 60% to 80% to curb inflation. The rate is currently the highest in the world and is an absolute record for the Southern African country. The freezing of bank credits, according to the business executives, aims to put a stop to the speculation against the Zimbabwean currency, which has been trading in recent days on the parallel market at nearly 400 Zimbabwean dollars for one US dollar, more than double its official rate. Zimbabwe's economy has been in deep crisis for more than 20 years, with international donors withdrawing because of unsustainable debt. Nigeria. Nigeria strikes a three-month deal for cheaper jet fuel. Nigeria's state oil company has agreed to help the country's airline source aviation fuel at a reduced price after they had threatened to halt all domestic flights. The airline say the price of fuel had tripled in just four months partly because of the impact the Russian-Ukraine conflict has had on the global energy market. The agreement followed a meeting between the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation NNPC, the central bank, and airline representatives. However, the deal is just for three months and the airline industry still faces potential disruption and fuel price hikes. The average cost of a one-hour domestic flight jumped from about $60 to $130 between February and May this year. Nigeria is Africa's top oil producer, but almost all its aviation fuel is imported because it lacks refining capacity. Africa-wide, Rihanna to launch Fenty Beauty products in Africa. Rihanna has announced that her Fenty Beauty and Fenty Skin products will become available in eight African countries from the end of this month. In a social media post, the pop star said that she had been waiting for this moment and that this was just the beginning. The beauty products will be available in Botswana, Ghana, Kenya, Namibia, Nigeria, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Rihanna, whose full name is Robbie Rihanna Fenty, launched Fenty Beauty in 2017 in a partnership with luxury goods company LVMH. She is worth $1.7 billion dollars, with an estimated $1.4 billion coming from the value of Fenty Beauty. The company reportedly made $100 million in its first 40 days. Mali A Malian judge summons the French Foreign Minister. A Malian judge has summoned French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian as part of an investigation into an attack on public property and other offenses. According to a Malian judicial source, the investigation follows a complaint from several civil groups gathered under the organization Maliko. It concerns a contract award for the manufacture of Malian passports to a French company to which the son of the minister is linked. 
An official document indicates the case dates back to 2015 when the evicted president Ibrahim Boubacar Keita was president. Jean-Yves Ledrian is expected in Bamako on the 20th of June. The investigation comes at a time of high tension between Mali and France as relations between the two countries have deteriorated in recent months and the military coups. Central Africa Bank of Central African States urges CAR to annul Bitcoin as currency. The Cameroon headquartered Bank of Central African States BEAC has urged the Central African Republic CAR to repeal a law passed in late April that made the cryptocurrency Bitcoin legal tender. The bank warned in a letter made public last week that the move violated its rules and could affect monetary stability in the region. BEAC said CAR's decision to make Bitcoin legal tender could compete with the Central African franc CFA, the region's France-backed currency. A letter dated April 29th by the bank's governor to the finance minister of CAR and made public last week said the move shows that CAR seeks a currency beyond the bank's control. The regional bank's letter suggested that cryptocurrency use could disturb monetary stability in the six-member Central African Economic and Monetary Community CEMAC. The bank urged the CAR to follow CEMAC to promote economic and financial cooperation and avoid monetary volatility policies. East Africa Lake Victoria locals blame companies for mysterious mass fish die-offs. Communities around Lake Victoria, the world's second largest lake, have relied on the body of water for food, energy and water for generations. It has been estimated that the 30 million people's livelihoods are directly or indirectly linked to the lake, which is estimated to generate $300 to $400 million each year. Lake Victoria has also historically been a source of important biodiversity and home to hundreds of species of fish. In the last year or so, huge quantities of fish have also been found dead on the shores of the lake. In just two months in 2021, over 100 tons of mostly Nile perch washed up on Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania, the three countries spanned by the lake. At up to about $4,000 per tonne, this is the equivalent of around $400,000 in potential lost revenue. Officials in both Kenya and Uganda have suggested the deaths were caused by a range of factors that have led to low oxygen levels with local authorities and fishermen pointing the blame family at local industries, specifically Nile Agro and Skyfert Leather, who release hazardous pollutants into the lake. West Africa Germany shifts focus on military missions in Mali, Niger. The German government has backed a change of two of the country's military deployments in West Africa, moving hundreds of soldiers from Mali to neighboring Niger and shifting its emphasis in Mali from a European to a United Nations mission. This comes only a few months after Mali's military-led transitional government said it had terminated all military and defense cooperation treaties with France. Germany's decision may be largely contributed to the recent Russian influence in Mali, with Malian forces receiving military training, support and equipment from the country. At the same time, Germany will increase its participation in a UN mission in Mali, providing up to 1,400 soldiers. Diaspora Brazil claims world's biggest ever barbecue. The Paraua Pebas City Hall, located in Para, state in northern Brazil, organized what they claim as the biggest barbecue in the world to celebrate the city's 34th anniversary. According to the city administration, 20,000 kilos of meat was used during the churrasco. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share, and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.